Good morning, everyone. On this Wednesday morning, we give thanks to God for God's presence with us, God's faithfulness, um, and a new day that we've been given as we gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. So we need it. We need it every day, <laughs> daily grace. And today on March 16th, Mary Zoll is our writer. And our text is Ecclesiastes 2, 14 through 16. The wise have eyes in their head, but fools walk in darkness. Yet I perceived that the same fate befalls all of them. Then I said to myself, what happens to the fools will happen to me also. Why then have I been so very wise? And I said to myself that this also is vanity. For there is no enduring remembrance of the wise or the fools, seeing that in the days to come all will have been long forgotten. How can the wise die just like fools? It is one of the priceless gifts of my life that I was born into a family of wise Christian people, especially my father and grandfather. Recently, I went with one of our sons and his young family to a gravesite where these parents and grandparents were buried. Our son spoke of them to his children. He was visibly moved as he recalled his grandparents. What a wonderful influence they had had on his young life. He wanted his own children to know about them and to remember them in this short visit to the cemetery. But apart from photos and stories, his children did not actually know these fine people. And my son did not know my grandparents, also buried there. It was a salutary lesson. All of us are short-lived and will scarcely be remembered, even if we have lived lives of exemplary Christian wisdom. This passage of Ecclesi from Ecclesiastes is a bit of a shock for riches and fame are easily target targeted as things passing away, while we think wisdom is to be sought. None of us wants to be a fool, yet even the wise die and are soon forgotten. What then is lasting? What about my life, if anything, will last beyond the grave? O oh Lord, show me the things which will last and root out any vanity in me, even my seeking after wisdom. Ooh, happy Lent, right? Or not happy Lent. Ecclesiastes is good for that, right? The vanity of vanities, all is vanity, chasing everything in the wind. I've heard this a lot actually lately of people comparing um, quality of life and foolishness or wisdom, um, violence or um, being pac um, pacifist and value. And why, why does one person who has such value and promise die and the fool live? Those questions are never gonna get us happy, are they? We can lament, <laughs> we can say it, we can rail against God for it because it's just, life is given to both right life is given to the worthy and the unworthy the wise and the fool and sometimes um it's interesting how the fools sometimes just kind of stumble their way through things and make it um and the wise knowing the pitfalls tend to sometimes fall into them or try to skirt a pitfall fall into another one i don't know <sighs> So what's the purpose? What's the point, right? Ecclesiastes wants us to kind of just, just um, hits at us, undermines us. Um, when I think of the image of the, of the grandparents, I, when we um, went to my uncle's funeral this summer, we did go to the family cemeteries um, for found my grandpa um, and grandma, and then went to the 
the Catholic cemetery and the old old Danish one out in the country and found, I think back four or five generations. And we, we know a few stories, we know their hardships, but we don't know the people, right? I mean, I know my grandparents, my children will know their grandparents. And maybe with some of what does get translated on is that that connectedness, even if we are unknown. I mean, I remember going to family reunions and it's like, oh, they all look like me. I belong here. <laughs> um, all we have the same nose or cheeks or, or something. And we, we have similar values. And so those stories do weave us together, um, make us feel like we belong. And so we do wanna connect our children to the past. Um, I just saw on Facebook yesterday that my one of my great uncles would have been a hundred years old yesterday. And I, I remember going to visit him. My, my parents did that. They would, we would go to our, our great uncles and aunts houses and hear the stories and be loved on and appreciated. And we would appreciate them back that, that value between the generations. Um, do we even know our parents well or our grandparents well? We know them in their vocational roles and others know other aspects of them. So I don't know if the foolishness and the wise of what is, what is passing away and what isn't. Um, what, I, what I see is that we are woven into the narrative. We, it is part of our story, um, part of the maybe the unconscious reactions that we have to, um, to finances, to food, to um, circumstances, to war, to um, moving, all those kind of things do play out generation to generation and you're not trapped in a cycle, but you are influenced by it um, and sometimes trapped by it without working hard. A lot does pass away, doesn't it? Everything in fact passes away. But does that mean that it wasn't important? Ecclesiastes um, tempts us there, doesn't it? It does pass away, but it has value. And it has value because Christ came to be in our midst and to enter the narrative, enter the history, because our stories matter to God. And God became part of history and part of our lives and honored that. Was it foolish to God, of God to do that because it was fleeting? Not one bit. It was the wisdom of God, the foolishness of the cross. Um, we can throw those words around, but the truth of the matter is, in Christ Jesus, our things that pass away have value. And that thread of value, that connection, because of Christ also goes from death to resurrection and new life in us. So we need to be shown the things that will last and root out the vanity, even my seeking after wisdom. Sometimes it's the foolishness of the cross and of our faith that is the wisest thing of all. Be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn. Bring in the glory of your ris our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. We think of wisdom and folly, and we think of the value of our lives, Lord. And it's easy to fall into despair, um, to feel like our life hasn't had worth or value because it is fleeting. But remind us, Lord, today that it does have value. That it's so much value that you, you came, um, your son came to us, into our life that's fleeting in order to give us hope and new life and the promise of resurrection. Remind us of that sustaining um, value, the foolishness of God, your foolishness that, that brought such richness and glory to our perhaps mundane lives that are of infinite value to you. 
for the new creation of in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray. Lord, we have a long list of people who need to be healed, who are grieving and need to be held, who have harmed or been harmed and need forgiveness. We lift up to you in our hearts, these people, us, ourselves, those we love, our, our enemies, those we don't know, and trust that you are at work creating anew. For the gifts of relationship with others, Lord, we thank your um, the giftedness we have in these relationships, the generations that have gone before. Um, we think back to our grandparents and great-grandparents and so forth and so on. And we marvel at all of the stories we will never know, but that you know them. It's remarkable. When you look at long genealogies in the Bible, Lord, it, it feels like just names on a page, but each of those people lived, were given life by you. So in all of these relationships, past, present, that mold us and form us and sometimes <laughs> are thorns in our sides, we, um, we, we are in wonder of, of how vast life is and how much our relationships do impact our lives. For the communion of faith in your church, Lord, we give thanks and we give thanks for these, these showings of connection and grace and love and honor and walking with. And we ask you to continue to help us do that even with more intentionality of being that community of faith, of that body of Christ. I, I rejoice, Lord, at the coffee hour last on Sunday. It was just fun that people were toasting with their coffee um, of just joy of being together in, in that um, old but familiar way once brought back. Thank you for, for how you are faithful. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for um, Zelensky and Ukraine and Putin and Russia. We have some um, choice words for some of these people, Lord, but we also um, will share those choice words with you. Maybe not say them out loud because you'll understand um, our frustration and our fear and our worry. And we pray that your will is done. Be with the nations that are reaching out um, and being vulnerable and those that are holding strong. We also pray for all the countries neighboring and our world that is interconnected right now. And for people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, Lord, be the balm of Gilead, be the peace, the shelter, the hope, Maybe that's the biggest prayer today, Lord, hope. Hope is such a, a necessary component to life. So even when we see the opposite, Lord, help us to have hope and therefore um, a place, a purpose um, to continue going forward. For all who work for peace and international harmony, multiply our, the work. Um, call us into this and help us to be, to love one another. For, the, for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we ask your continued bless, blessings upon us. And for the church of Jesus Christ in every land, continue to make us bold in your proclamation, Lord, and to gather us in as your Holy Spirit does, like a hen gathering her chicks. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.